Hello. The Warhammer world is full of renowned individuals, legends who have shaped the course of battles, wars, and civilizations through their deeds and their words. But few of those heroes have changed that history through the potency and power of their beer. I'm Jordan, this is Jordan Sorcery, and today we're brewing up a history of dwarf legend Joseph Bugman. So, we're going to be taking a look at the appearances of Big Joe Bugman over the years. Then, we'll spend a little bit of time with one of Rick Priestley's final games for Games Workshop, The Bugman's Game, a game of barroom skullduggery. This was a limited release available from Warhammer World. It's a very simple board game where you play a drunken dwarf trying to get to the bar to order the booze and the grub for your mates before the other dwarves get there first. Joseph Bugman is a dwarf, perhaps the dwarf. He is a legendary brewmaster responsible for some of the most potent potables in the Warhammer world, and he has lived through almost every edition. There have been 10 different miniatures that represent him over the years, and he's even returned from the dead. If you were looking for the next part of my Making of Warhammer series, don't worry, that is coming soon, but it takes a little bit of time to ferment. So for now, let's find out exactly what happened to Joseph Bugman to make him into the legend he is today. Joseph Bugman was possibly the most famous dwarf master brewer of all time. The brewing community of Bugman's Brewery, in fact a small town, had been founded in ages past by the great Samuel Bugman, Joseph's long dead grandfather. By the time of the Goblin Wars, Joseph was a prosperous and wealthy brewing merchant, and a reasonably passive and contented dwarf. His small community lay well off the beaten track, away from the worst excesses of the fighting, and Joseph felt no inclination to meddle in in what seemed to him to be a domestic quarrel. After all, brass was brass, and Bugman's bitter sold well to goblins and dwarves alike. Joseph found himself unexpectedly involved in the war when a convoy transporting Bugman's best bitter into the troll country was attacked by a rampaging goblin band. Every last dwarf was slain, including his only son, Bono. The news came as a terrible blow to the old dwarf, who instantly swore uncompromising revenge upon the goblins for this foul deed of theft and murder. Without hesitation, Joseph took up his sword and his armor and gathered a small band of his workers, all of whom had lost relatives or friends in the massacre. The band disappeared into the Badlands, and little was heard from them during the following years. Rumors from the south told of the ravages of Bugman's rangers, of cunning ambushes, of deadly nocturnal raids, and the consternation of the goblins. Eventually, wounded and deathly exhausted, Bugman and a pitifully small band of his dwarves returned to the brewery, where they would fight their last battle to defend it from the advancing goblin armies. Whilst all of the dwarves appeared to be killed, Joseph Bugman's body was never found. The first miniature of Joseph Bugman came out in 1984, with the release of the Regiments of Renown for 2nd Edition Warhammer. If you want to know more about these very characterful regiments, then you can check out the quick video I made about them through the link in the description. Mr. Bugman entered battle alongside a metal-based unit of his famous dwarf rangers, all of whom were sculpted by Alan and Michael Perry. The Bugman's Rangers Regiment of Renown would receive an update to take advantage of new slaughter-based technology in December 1986 with new sculpts again provided by the Perry twins. And with their release came the continuation of the Bugman legend. A stranger caked in dirt and clad only in oily rags made their way into the dwarfen hold of Carrick Varn in search of a meeting with the king. On the back of the stranger's cart, covered in a dark and heavy tarpaulin, rested a barrel of considerable girth. When finally granted an audience with the leader of the hold, the dwarf presented a tankard of liquid taken from the cart hauled cask, and almost immediately, the king understood who this dwarf was that stood before him. Joseph Bugman had returned from the dead, and he'd brought his ale with him. Now based in Carrick Varn, Joseph Bugman would recruit a new unit of rangers and set about on a new quest, this time to retake and rebuild his brewery. 
In White Dwarf 96, Bugman's now famous cursed carrying cart would join battle as well. Sculpted by Trish Carden, the cart is built on the chassis of a previous kit, the Adventurer's Cart, but with the addition of some barrels of Bugman's finest, as well as some travel snacks resting on the driver's seat. This was truly an enviable mount. A second version of the cart was also made available as a US exclusive. Sculpted by Daniel Tabo, this updated version is much bigger and, more importantly, holds a significant amount more ale. Hence its mighty fine name, Bugman's Keg of the Covenant. With the fourth edition of Warhammer came the first Warhammer Army's Dwarf book, and in its hallowed pages you would find the return of Joseph Bugman and his Rangers. Sculpted only by Michael Perry, this special unit was released in 1993 as part of the new Dwarf range. The Army's book had added some additional detail to the lore of Bugman and his brewery. Bugman's grandfather, Samuel, who had been mentioned in that first bit of Bugman's background, was changed in this story to be Bugman's father, and his unusual dwarven name, Samuel, was explained here. His birth name was actually Zamnil, but he feared that this would make men of the Empire less likely to buy his ale, and having settled near the River Sol on the border of the Empire, he was pretty convinced he would need their custom. This was also the reason that Joseph Bugman was given a more traditionally human name as well. We do, though, get the names of a couple more Bugman's beers. We find out about the infamous Troll Brew and the precious Bugman's 6X. In 1996, Ali Morrison was responsible for a new version of Bugman, the Bugman's Bar Special Edition, the first in a series of Bugman miniatures that would only be available exclusively at Warhammer World. Just in case you've never been, the on-site bar at Warhammer World is in fact a Bugman's bar, decked out with fantasy memorabilia and themed furniture. Ali Morrison would actually go on to sculpt two more versions of Joseph Bugman that would only be available exclusively at GWHQ. The next version was released in 2008. The true beauty of this miniature is that he can be assembled wielding either a classic Dwarven Axe or a classic Barman's Stool. The third and final Morrison Warhammer World exclusive was released in 2012 and would see the brewmaster finally succumbing to his most potent brew, collapsed against a couple of barrels having had a few tankards too many. There was another Ali Morrison Bugman though, another exclusive, but this one wasn't to celebrate Warhammer World, no this was to celebrate 30 years of White Dwarf. The miniature featured three legendary dwarves, Joseph Bugman alongside Gotrek hoisting aloft Grombrindal, the White Dwarf himself, who stands atop the Shield of Ancestors. Issue 330 of White Dwarf told the story of these three legends meeting near Karak Varn at the Battle of Kragmir, and it also provided game rules so that you could field the mighty trio in Warhammer 6th edition. There is another Bugman though, one who has traded the fields of battle for fields altogether bloodier, the pitches of Blood Bowl. In 2018, Forge World released a set of star player and coach models of Joseph Bugman, so that he could join your team and spice up the halftime water cooler. Age of Sigma and the Mortal Realms has even seen its own version of Bugman as well, sort of. Jakob Bugmanson XI claims to be a distant descendant of the legendary brewmaster, though how you trace your family tree back to the world that was, I have no idea. Bugmanson was released as a limited time Boxing Day Mini in 2020, and even carries a personal supply of his own ale into battle. Oh, and the old Marauder Giant model also carried a keg of Bugman's ale with him, which he presumably drank like a shot. There have been a few pieces of Bugman's memorabilia over the years. A coin, a hip flask, a pocket watch. But none of those quite capture the notoriety, questionable choices and regrettable actions that occur after too many steins of Bugman's ale in Bugman's bar. For that, you're better off looking to the Bugman's game. Designed by Rick Priestley and released in 2009, this is a relatively simple game where you play dwarves trying to buy booze. It's designed for about three to six players, and in it you play one of six dwarf characters. If you're interested, they are Burpee, Squiffy, Boozy, Scrumpy, 
Tipsy and Belch. But you can't play Squiffy because Martha has taken quite a liking to him. Each player is seated with a table full of fellow dwarf revelers who are in need of refreshment. So turns are taken to make your way across the drinking hall to pick up drinks and food before ferrying them back to your table. Of course, it's not a quiet night at Bugman's and there are a few complications to deal with. You could get drawn into a bar fight with trolls, halflings or your fellow dwarves. You could get caught short and need to find a working bog. You could have your drinks knocked out of your hands by overly enthusiastic barroom patrons. You can even find yourself aquaplaning uncontrollably across the vomit-strewn floors of the tavern. You move d6 squares with a negative modifier for every bit of food and drink you're carrying. You roll a d6 to find out how you score in a fight, highest wins, and that's pretty much it. It's super simple. But the layers of gameplay come in the form of a hand of cards that each player has available. These can move characters around the board, cause unexpected mishaps, or add to those dice results when it comes time for fisticuffs. It's purposefully easy to learn, but there's loads of opportunities to mess with other players. You can literally just get in their way, or you can play your cards into their fights, causing them to win or to lose and to suffer the consequences. It's a very light, very frivolous and fun party game absolutely designed to be the perfect kind of thing to play if you were say in Bugman's bar and it's helped through that by being super super themey it's all about that fun setting the bar menu includes plates of squid curry and pints of Bugman's best avoided a moody elf and a gobbo loan shark can be found hanging out in the place there are cards that let you force someone to get around in or let you kick him into donglies. Some of it is certainly a little bit coarse, but all of it is in the spirit of silly fun. And look, rock solid, definitely canon evidence of a friendly Skaven lad, or at least one friendly enough to have a bar fight with. Also worth a quick mention, there used to be a set of drunk dwarves available from Citadel sculpted by Colin Dixon. They make ideal substitutes for the card playing pieces in the game. I only have two of these chaps though, so for now I'll be forced to continue using the card boys. Except for Squiffy of course, as discussed. I really want to try playing this game with six players. I think that it would be absolutely perfect for those game nights where we've finished a bit early, we've got 30 minutes left, some time to kill, but we don't want anything too complex. I think the rules are fruity and lightweight, like a good elven wine, but it still has enough of a gut punch, like a proper dwarven ale as well. So I hope that you've enjoyed this history of Joseph Bugman and this look at the Bugman's Game by Rick Priestley. I know I enjoyed doing all of this research and looking at this stupid stuff and you know drinking a couple of beers to get in the right spirit. Most of the pictures that I've shared today have been from Stuff of Legends, an incredible resource that has an archive of loads and loads of classic Citadel miniatures and miniatures from other companies from the History of Games Workshop. It's definitely worth a look. I've included a link in the description below I hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you did, then feel free to leave a like, feel free to subscribe to the channel. If you really want to support the work that I'm doing on the channel, then you can check out my Patreon as well. I always welcome new Patreon members, but there's absolutely no obligation. Thank you very much for watching. I am Jordan, and this is Jordan Sorcery. Now, I was going to sing a rousing chorus of what should we do with a drunken bugman, but as you know, things can get a bit rowdy when that song starts singing, and I think Martha would, would really get too into it, so I'm going to avoid it for now. Now, you know what? 